really nervous. <laughs> All right, so the video. Um, this is one of my favorite. They, they do skits and things about, um, I guess, like serious stuff to make it kind of funny or um, a little bit more interesting, if you can understand. Uh, I was going to talk about spiritual gifts this morning and the gifts that God gives us and how we can use them um, to minister or just uh, uh, to be used in the church, uh, to be used in our personal life, just to be used all around. Um, this, the spiritual life, um, our life of faith is not just for, for church, for here, showing up on Sunday and then um, not living it out the rest of, you know, the rest of our, our time or out in the world. Uh, this video I like because the girl was so excited. She got the 8 ounce can of Coke and she was like, yeah, this is awesome. This is my favorite thing ever. And then someone else comes with a different gift, um, a different ability, and immediately she's knocked down by comparison. She starts compar comparing the gifts that God has given to her um, with the gifts that God um, gave to everyone else. Um, and uh, comparison, I'm sure, is uh, something that Satan enjoys seeing. Because how easy is it? He doesn't have to do any work. You did it to yourself. She knocked down herself um, and her gifts instead of you know, being able to use it. Like he said in the video, until you can look past whatever it is. Um, the lack of ability that you have or the lack of gifts that you think that you have. And comparing them to other people's. You're never going to see the potential that you have to use your unique spiritual gifts um, in the way that you're supposed to use it. First <clears throat> uh, Corinthians 12:31 it says, "Earnestly, earnestly desire the higher gift, and I will show you a more excellent way." God wants us to be used by Him. He wants us to have the the full experience of the Christian life. Um, if we desire those, he will show us a more excellent way. I like how that's worded. Like, there, you have a unique ability, and um, you know God has a desire to give that to you and show that to you and help you see um, your potential. Um, when I was a kid, growing up in church, so uh, I grew up in church all my life, and I think when I first kind of started to to realize, oh, like. People can do like really cool things, you know. Like the pastor, his gift or ability is to preach and bring the word. Um, you know, people can sing or people can do all these things. And uh, I just remember like sitting in the um, in the pew. I grew up at really old school church, so you just stay in service um, for your whole entire life. Uh, and uh, I just remember like there was this lady, and she could sing like so amazing. And I was like, she must be an angel. And I was like, she's an angel, she's sent from God, and she sings in our church, and it's amazing, and her spiritual gift is being an angel and singing in our church. And I was like, I can't wait till I become an angel, and I'll sing in the church, and I'll have this awesome you know, spiritual gift, but I can't sing. And I wanted to be a singer when I was a kid, and my mom's like, you know what? This is not a talent that you have. <laughs> I just want to let you know, you know, before Simon Cowell does it on American Idol. And I was like, all right, I'll take that and I'll, you know, try to find out what my spiritual gift is. Um, so for the first fill in the blank set is we all possess natural talents. So natural talents would be like um, the music ministry here, the, the, you know, playing the guitar, the drums, singing. Those are natural abilities that you have. You can't make yourself... I couldn't make myself become a singer um, and make myself be good at that. That was not a natural talent or a spiritual gift that I possess or will ever possess. Um, we all have uh, natural talents and spiritual gifts. Uh, once we accept Christ, both are used for ministry. Um, natural talents, like I said before, singing, um, public speaking. It's a lot different than like actually like maybe a pastoral calling. Just um, maybe the gift of like, uh, or the natural talent of understanding things. You're very good at, you know, seeing problems and solutions and stuff like that. Um, logistics, the craftsman. And immediately, I thought of Trevor. Um, just the natural craftsman ability that he had. That was a skill. He didn't, um, 
he just had a natural ability to make those things and he loved doing that and that was one of his his ministry callings <coughs> um, organization service charity and then there's list of spiritual gifts I have I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures for a second here uh, da, da, da. yeah so if you have your bible because it's not in the slideshow because I picked too many scriptures to read all at once. Um, uh, it's um, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 30. It's not that many. It's just There's 30 of them. <laughs> now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. Know that you were... Um, you know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spiritual gifts ever said, Jesus is accursed. No one says that Jesus is Lord except for in the Spirit. Uh, this, Just this section, though, he doesn't want us to be uninformed. God wants us to find our spiritual gifts, to understand them and better be able to use them in the body of Christ and in the world around us. There are a variety of gifts, but in the same spirit. There are a variety of service, but the same Lord. There are a variety of activities, but in the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the man manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For one is given through the spirit utterance of wisdom, and the other one utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. To the other faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of healing to one spirit, to another the work of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by the one and the same spirit who proportions each individually as he wills. So, all these different things that you could um, be gifted with in the spirit, they're all individual as God wills. Um, like in the example in the, in the video, like it wasn't about the amount of coke that they received. It wasn't about the amount. It was the unique gift that he was giving per each individual. For as, as we are, for just as we are in one body, has many members, all the members of the body, though many are one, are one body, so that it is with Christ. For one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves and free. All were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of members, but of many. <clears throat> if the foot said, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less of the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the, se where would the sense of smell be? But it is God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, were just... Where would, oh, sorry. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand that I have no need for you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the parts of the body may seem weaker and indispensable, but those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our un unpresentable parts we treated with greater modesty when which are more presentable parts of the body require but God has composed the body given greater honor to the part he lacked in it then there's no division in the body but the members have the same care for one another if one member suffers all suffer together if one member is honored all rejoice together now you have the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed the church of the first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administering, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers. Do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret. But earnestly seek the higher gifts and you will be shown a more excellent way. So we're all, we're all members of the body. 
if we take time to not be jealous of other people's gifts, singing or whatever, maybe the ones that are more seen in the church will actually be a more cohesive unit. We all we need all the parts of the body to work efficiently um, for the kingdom and to work in the Edge Church. Um, there was this lady at my church growing up again, um, and she was a humble servant and just the most, I don't know, she had a servant's heart. She never once complained, never once sought credit for the things that she had done, but she was essential to, the, to our church body. She would come and clean the church every week, not, like, not to, like, she didn't even tell anybody. No one asked her to do it. No one, I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> Somebody clean this place. Um, she was just great. Like, she would just, she would stay late and clean up after, um, like, if we had big gatherings and stuff like that. She was always helpful in the service part where no one saw her, no one gave her recognition for it, no credit for it. Um, but she did it with, like, a, um, a Christ attitude, and that was her act of service, and she loved doing it. Um, it's not for everyone, you know, but, like, that was where she felt called, and that was where she put her love in and, and, and ministry into the, you know, the church. Oh. Our spiritual gifts are unique to the individual. And specific to your role in the body of Christ. Um, uh, sorry. I am trying to say. <laughs> I have some more scripture. Yeah. Um, Ephesians 4, 4 through 8. There is one body and one spirit, just as we are called with one hope that brings... That belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of, of measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. <clears throat> so the gifts that God has given us are um, for the common good to benefit all of us in the body of Christ. Um, they are to make us stronger and more confident in our faith. Um, the same Spirit, so they are given us to us by the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which dwells among us as we, after we accept Christ. The Holy Spirit is, I guess, who you kind of go through to find your spiritual gifts, cultivate your spiritual gifts, um, kind of hone in on that. The Holy Spirit is kind of one of those um, not so mentioned three parts of the body of, of Christ or the you know the Godhead three in one. Uh, the Holy Spirit is very essential to our Christian life and it helps you um, cultivate and grow your faith. Um, yep. Yeah, the... Um, the soul, so it says, the soul is your essence of humanity. The spirit is what connects with God. So, your soul, when people think of your soul, I guess, that is the, for this definition I found, is the human part of us. And then our, uh, our spirit is what connects with Christ. And we use that through the Holy Spirit. Um... Spiritual discernment, um, spiritual direction and understanding. I feel like that's one of my spiritual gifts. I have not used it quite as I should, I think, in all areas of my life. But um, when I was younger, when I came to faith, I think you have that, um, that passion and that... Um, just drive where you just don't even care. You don't care what other people think. You're just like super excited about it. You know, you know Christ and you have a different perspective and outlook than anybody else. 
and um, I was that crazy Christian kid in high school that wore like all the Jesus shirts and I would like walk around the halls, don't let your friends go to hell, you know? This is my, this is my, this is a good way to witness to people. And, um, and so I just became like the crazy Jesus freak kid. Um, but I remember as I got older and progressed in my faith and I was like, you know what, this is not the best maybe method, you know, to witness or to share my faith where people actually want to come to your church afterwards. Um, so I was at, uh, I was at church camp one year and uh, it was my senior senior year last year of church camp and I was just kind of like all right you know God just like show me something cool you know show me something cool do something cool let's just let's be in this together and like not weird you know not like I left my Jesus shirts at home I mean we're at church camp already so um, there was this girl and I remember it it vividly it was just like I had seen her before, and I thought, you know, God was like, you should talk to her. I was like, I've never seen her before in my life. I don't even know, like, her name or anything. And so I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. And then another, a couple days later, I saw her again, and she was in this little park bench. She was sitting there, just crying, and I was like, I felt the same feeling, like, you should just go talk to her. You know, you're the one that prayed for something to happen, you know, like, you, here's your opportunity. And so I went over there and I was like, hey, as awkward as this is, I think God wants me to talk to you. She's like, okay. I was like, yep, so I'm going to sit down. And whenever you're ready, I'm here to talk to you. And uh, she stopped crying and and, uh, she was telling me a little bit about her life. I guess she had a, a... pretty interesting kind of rocky home life and her friend had invited her to church camp and she didn't really want to come but she decided to come and she said you know I, I had intentions to end my life and my friend invited me to church camp and uh, I said you know God better show me something and uh I was like, well, I wasn't really prepared for that situation. But uh, I said, well, you know, all I have is that I felt, you know, a tug on my heart to come talk to you. And I want you to know, like, he cares about you and he loves you. And uh, that's all I got. And we prayed together and, you know, um, that wasn't me. That was God. And I believe that uh, if I hadn't chose to accept that tug, that somebody else would have. Like, he, he had a plan for that girl um, to show her that she was important enough to, to, to live, you know, that she's going to make it through um, whatever that she was going through. And that is what our spiritual gifts are about. They're not about, I don't know, they're not about the, the super huge big things like, you know, I don't know, uh, televangelists that, you know, bringing all these people to Christ or, you know, the Benny Hinn where like, everyone's falling on the ground. Um, I don't think those are like the exact things that we're supposed to use our spiritual gifts for. I think it's the little things in life, just like the everyday things. Um, be more aware of like the people around us. And it could be awkward. It could be weird. But you could feel this feeling in a grocery store. And, you know, go give somebody a hug or something. It sounds weird, but (laughs) it works. And it might not be your spiritual gift, but I've hugged plenty of strangers. Um, (laughs) It's my spiritual gift, hugging strangers. Um, I don't know. It's a cool thing to just kind of be more aware of the spirit in your life and your, your specific spiritual gifts to use them and when you start using them I think it sparks a little bit of your faith makes it more real makes it more tangible to you personally um, does it bless others? yes but also it blesses you and your Christian life um, the last fill in the blank here is our job is to find our spiritual gifts set so usually they come in like threes 
Um, so you have like three prominent spiritual gifts. And if I was going to print out like a survey thing and there were like so many pages and so many people. Um, but you can search for them online. You can take them online. You can also buy them at like uh, Lifeway. But if you take your spiritual gift survey, it will give you like your dominant three spiritual gifts. And then you can kind of use that as a guide to cultivate them and uh, trial and error, try them out, see where you fit and where you would be best at serving. Um, just as athletes um, or musicians, they have to cultivate their abilities. We also have to, what? Mathematicians, that's not a special gift. <laughs> you don't need math for life. Um, just as <laughs> oh yeah, just as athletes and musicians have uh, have to cultivate their abilities. So I mean, you might have natural athletic ability, but you still have to train. Um, you have to do things to further your athletic ability. You have natural ability, but to make it great. You have to do something with it. Um, so just as we have um, natural talents and um, spiritual gifts, we have to find ways to cultivate them, get involved in the church, wherever, <clears throat> you know, jump in. If you don't like, you know, the children's department or whatever, whatever, there's another opportunity for you. Um, or make up an opportunity. I mean, if you, if you see something that you think, hey, this could be cool, you know, bring it to the pastor and, you know, say, I think, I feel called to do this or I'd like to try this out. And, I, you know, let's go from there and see how that works. Um, so, yeah, we all have spiritual gifts and natural talents and we need to cultivate them to be effective um, for personal growth, for personal faith, and as well as the body. Um... Yeah, so another story of talking to strangers. That's all I got. That's my, that's my MO. That's the thing I do. Um, I was at a bar, because that's a cool place for Christians to hang out. And, um, I mean, anything can happen. That's a good place. Uh, you know, having a few drinks with a friend of mine, and she was flirting with this guy next to us, which, I don't know. He was probably like 18. So I was like, oh. Anyways, it was a little inappropriate. And uh, anyways, these people came and they sat down next to me. And I was kind of eavesdropping. I think that's a spiritual gift too. Um, and so I was like listening. And I was like, man, they just got married and something or other. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Congratulations, guys. You know, they're like... Yeah. I was like, yeah. Congratulations. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, my name's Kristen. Like, how are you? What are you, yeah, what are you guys up to here? And uh, come to find out, they uh, just, they had just gotten married. They're from Charlotte. And they were out here because they had their wedding out here. And, uh, or they were something. I don't know. I didn't remember all the story. But, I mean, I was... I was drinking at a bar. So. Um. Uh, anyways, the the moral of the story is they they were sharing about uh, about their life, and I had just like the morning the morning of I was like you know what like my kids are playing quietly like let's get into the word and like study and meditate on a scripture, and the one that just pulled up on my app on my phone was about how uh, God comforts us in ways that we don't understand through trial, through pain, through suffering. He's there and he brings us this this amazing, you know, divine comfort for our things that we're going through. And uh, these people happen to be the um, sister and brother-in-law of the pe the kids, the the people who lost their children on Highway 17 in that accident. They lost both of their sons. Um, and uh, they got to share that with me. And I got to share that scripture with them. I said, it's probably not going to help. You know, but ease your pain. But I said, you know, like, weird things happen for a reason, you know. Like, to, why did God give me that gift, you know, that, that message that morning? I'm like, why did I talk to these strangers? I mean, um, weird things like that always help me to just kind of, it sparks my faith. It gives me a little bit more of a, a reason to keep on living the Christian life. 
to be able to minister to people who, you know, they may not step foot in church or anything like that. They may not come close to the building, but we can be the church, you know, outside of the walls and just be like our regular life, you know. We don't have to act like we have it all together or we're perfect or, you know, um, we're not supposed to do this or this kind of thing. You can't witness people at a bar. You're not supposed to be at a bar. You know, all the sorts of rules that we make ourselves. Um, I used to live by that, like, this is what you're supposed to do and this is how you're supposed to be and don't tell anybody else what you do if you do anything other than what's on the list of things you're supposed to do. And um, I don't know, it's, there's freedom in this. There's freedom in knowing your spiritual gifts. There's freedom in being bold, um, having more of an understanding of where God wants you to serve, how God wants you to serve, um, who He created you to be in your faith. Um, there's, there's a plan and a purpose to your unique personality. There's a plan and a purpose to uh, the gifts and abilities that you're, you're able to do and, and do well. Um, like I said, we all are members of the body. We can't just say the hand is useless or whatever it is. Um, we, we need all of it. We need all to be working together. Um, we need the feet to go on missions. You know, Joel, I don't know if he's here, but um, he's gone on missions before. He, you know, went to Nepal. We need him. He's part of the edge, and, and we need his uh, mission's heart to go and to tell other people. Um, just uh, everybody working together um, to be used. And there we go. Another scripture. Because it seems like time. Um, 1 Peter 4.10 says, As each of us receive the gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So, <clears throat> I don't know. All this scripture to me just points to one thing that we're all called to help each other to be here for one another as the body of believers, to build each other up, to learn what our gifts and talents are, and to encourage each other to use them, to, to cultivate them, to grow them, so that we can grow our spiritual life, um, and that we can grow our church as well. Because I think that people will notice a difference if they walk into the edge and everyone is supporting one another, being real with one another, being honest with one another, loving one another, and um, we're all being used. We're all figuring out where we belong in this unique body of believers. People will see that. People will see a difference in that. You know, I'll be like, hey, the Edge Church is a real friendly place. It's a, you know, I can go there and I feel loved and I feel accepted. You know, I, uh, I feel like they, they want me there, that I belong. And then there's a place for you to serve and grow and connect with other people. Um, and th this is just part of how we, how we go about this is finding um, finding our unique talents and abilities and using them um, for Christ and for His kingdom. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. I feel like. <laughs>